surprise almost in equal measure. On Rose Speaker, we've witnessed the young generation, that is the, 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 the Gen Z, and the millennials took to the street because of the dissatisfaction of the finance bill 2014, 2024, 2025. Honorable Speaker, perhaps the Kiswahili Waenga were not wrong when they said, Ukiskia Mugambo ya Muganga Ikilia Pila Shaka Kuna Jambo. Mweshimua Speaker, uh, Honorable Speaker, allow me to thank the leadership of this house for coming up with this motion and seeing the sense of putting this country above everything. Honorable Speaker, as a mother, it breaks my heart to see our children lose their lives on the streets, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, a number of families who lost their loved ones took to the streets demonstrating the pain they were undergoing, Honorable Speaker, having sent their kids to school, and within no time, they have struggled to make sure that they have paid their fees, they have sent these students to the various institutions across the country, but to a single day, find their loved ones lying helplessly uh, uh, in the roads, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I also want to say that, Honorable Speaker, it goes without saying that this country hails from a deeper disease called corruption. Misappropriation of funds, both in two levels of government, that is within the national government and the county government, has been the order of the day. We've have, we have seen leaders in opulence that has left unanswered questions in the minds of Kenyans. Public funds are misappropriated and poor uses of government resources against provision of the BFM Act, Honorable Speaker. Every day, our daily news reports millions and billions of shillings being lost. Now the question is, is it really lost? The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Act read with our Constitution seem not to be doing enough to bring the corrupt officials to book. The young people went on a rampage and firmly opposed the finance bill, but we must see beyond the streets. What they seem to be asking is the taxes vis-a-vis -vis the service they are rendered. Honorable Speaker, this House mandate is to make sure that the county governments are there to the BFM Act. Honorable Speaker, a number of colleagues have raised their voices in this House talking about dissatisfaction on the service delivery and the use of finances either in the national government or within the county government. But I want to say, Honorable Speaker, that we've been continuing giving room to the county governments to misuse the same funds to an extent that today we are talking of a huge amount on the pending bills across the country, both in the national government and in the county government. Honorable Speaker, the same bills that we are talking about cannot, cannot be, be told on where it was used. But when it comes to books, we have a huge pending bill, Honorable Speaker. The service which are being rendered 
have never been actualized. Reason is because one way, in one way or another, us, as part of the stakeholders who are supposed to really check on the prudence use of the resources, in one way or another, the, 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 the GNC are reminding us today of our work. When you see the lives that were lost, Honorable Speaker, I asked myself a number of questions. This life has been lost because of the duty that I'm supposed to do, because of the duty that I'm supposed to discharge, because of the oversight that has been bestowed upon us. If this house is going to raise to an occasion where a legislation is going to be made for those who are not going to adhere to the rules or to the prudent use of the resources, are denied the resources. I think, Honorable Speaker, things will change. And the way we are working uh, will really change. Honorable Speaker, I must applaud the GNC. The GNC had, had moved to the streets, not because they wanted to be seen, but because they were passing a very strong message. A message that was talking about issues pertaining unemployment. We have a thousand graduates. Some have graduated 10 years down the line. It's not that they are not qualified, but they are qualified others with first class honors. But I want to say that they are still in the villages with no employment. And I also want to bring to the attention of the Kenyans that this problem did not start with a new government. This is a problem that has been there before. And the reason why I'm saying this is because we have even a number of teachers who graduated 2009. Some of them are almost retiring. They have never been employed, employed to date. Some may get an opportunity of going through the shortcuts if they know someone, but the, 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 the real hustlers have just been hanging with no hope. Nothing could stop this jealousy from going to the streets. <coughs> Honorable Speaker, in the same measure, I would also want to applaud the government for the few strides that they have made, despite the fact that it's still early. We only have barely two years in office, and I must thank the Kenya Kwanzaa government for the steps that they have taken to an extent that they have been giving employment, even though they, 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 a number of youths are talking of uh, 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 the qualified being taken to abroad, I want to say at least there are some, and even when you go to check within the website, you will find that there are some who have really uh, gotten jobs abroad. Uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the government have tried in terms of subsidizing the fertilizer to be able to increase the food production. That one, I must thank the government, and I must say that the government has been trying its best in terms of improving the economy of this country. Despite the shortcomings, despite a lot of politics, the light, the, despite the political scores that we are trying to, 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 to hijack the agenda of the GNC, I want to say and to tell the president that he was in the right direction, and I also thank him for giving room to the agencies and even listening to this house to an extent that part of the discussion that we've done from the word go when we were discussing the state of the nation, some of them have been implemented. One of them being the signing of the IEPC uh, legislation. There is also the issue of the NATCO report. I want to thank the president and to say that leadership is about consultation. Honorable Speaker, 
Not only that, there are a number of things that the government has done. If given room, a number of issues that has been raised, I know they are going to be addressed. The finance bill that was dropped by the president was not dropped because we don't need or the members of parliament were wrong. It was dropped because they needed a dialogue on some of the areas that the hustlers or the citizens of this country were feeling unsatisfied. Honorable Speaker, I want to say it's high time that we leave our political affiliations first. All the African countries are looking at us, a country that has been ahead in a number of things, issues of democracy. Today, we are tracking because of part of it politics, part of it corruption. It is a high time that we have the game. It's no longer business as usual. The voices have been raised. Those which are doable, let it be done by the government. Honorable Speaker, the riots have caused business to be closed. Some business were vandalized. Some panned and general unrest as a direct effect of the economy. If there is no flow of money in the economy, then we suddenly are looking at a hurting economy. Riots has also affected the investors. For them to invest. If all these things are going to take place, Honorable Speaker, even the investors who could employ a number of youths will run away from this country. You saw a number of businesses being destroyed, not by the GNCs, but by those who decided that it was an advantage for them to do what is wrong. That is why they went to an extent of coming to parliament to vandalize, not because they hate parliament, but because some few individuals were trying to send their, uh, to, 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 to handle their political scores. Honorable Speaker, the way forward is not to point fingers at who did what and who did who, 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 who did what and who did not. And the leader serving in the Senate at such a time, Honorable Speaker, history will charge us harshly. Honorable Speaker, I call upon the leaders to lead with integrity of serving the Chapter 6 of the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, the Bible says, to whom much is given, much shall be expected from them. Much is expected from us as leaders. In the two houses, in different ministries across the parastatals. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Senator Joyce. And